Previously on Starting Over, Tawanda planted a garden to help deal with the negative feelings she has towards her father after his affair. We're going to plant all of the good things that we want to see, and we're not worrying about none of the other stuff. And Iyanla gave Tawanda an assignment so she could learn more about herself and forgiveness. You were going to write your autobiography. After a lot of resistance, Summer finally accepted she gave weight to avoid her feelings. Food and weight have basically dictated my entire life. Maureen returned to the house following a devastating fire, and she realized in order to heal, she also needs to grieve her two children who passed away. It is okay to be devastated by this. You really need to feel sad about lots of things in your life that maybe you never allowed yourself to feel sad enough for. And Jennifer released years of pent-up rage at a special anger session. That's not fair. That I don't have a father! That I don't have a mother! That I had to raise myself! And people laugh! It's not funny! It feels like I finally have let something go. <laughs> Feeling okay? Yeah. Any revelations, awarenesses, understandings? I'm checking in on Jennifer after the incredible anger work she did yesterday. It really was time for her to release. To me, that bat was anger. Mm -hmm. And I was too afraid to get angry. Much to your credit, you had developed a highly sophisticated defense mechanism. Probably because your, your dad yelled and screamed and shut doors. And as a child, Jennifer, you had nowhere to go. So you figured out a way to shut down or drop out. And for you, it was... Uh, I'm not angry, you know? <laughs> and your anger was wired up with humiliation. So yelling and screaming or uh, bad behavior while it made you angry, it was the humiliation that triggered you enough to say something about it. Yes, I had to bring the heinous bitch. You told me to let the bitch out, and she just attacked the first person that she saw. So, you know, we don't have to do it today. Yesterday was long. It was yes, hard. It was straining. But let's take a look there. Let's find out. Let's go back. Maybe some people there we need to forgive. And, and that makes sense because if it was around mom being sick, that's one level of humiliation, not having a mom. If it's around dad being arrested, that's another level. If it's around how people treated you, that's a whole nother level because now we know the trigger to the anger is the humiliation. So if we can move through the humiliation, we'll release the anger. Yeah, it was frightening for all of yesterday. Well, I thought it was absolutely, I was humbled by your courage and by your commitment. Is it okay if I talk about how I feel Sure, honey. It's been really weird how this has brought a whole lot of feelings about Joe and Linda back you know, just in thinking maybe we're all in a certain stage of grief right now. I think so. So now I can't be so angry or feel abandoned because you got everybody's your... maybe feeling the same thing yeah. in their own way. This, this has brought up Joe and Linda to me really hard. Me too. I guess, you know, like Carol hasn't grieved, you haven't grieved, I haven't grieved. I'm sure your father hasn't, but we have, but we just haven't finished yet. I don't know if there is a finishing. Hey, ladies. Hey. How you living? Good. You get nervous when I have a bag, don't you? For each of us. Mm -hmm. Take one and pass the rest. Today's group is looking in the mirror of self. Today, the ladies are going to have the opportunity to introduce themselves to themselves. Isn't it funny that when we look in the mirror as women, the first thing we do is fix our hair, <laughs> fix our makeup. But today, I want you to look in this mirror, not at the cosmetics, but at that soul. Just take a look and know that that is your friend. 
that when no one else was there, she was there. When they said you couldn't, she said you could. When was the last time you said to her, thank you, I love you, for all you've given me, all you've been to me, you are my hero. She is a phenomenal woman. Just take a look at her. With this exercise, I hope that the women will learn about healthy self-talk. Because once they learn to think and speak positively about themselves, others will follow. For those women who have low self-esteem or low self-worth, this could be rather difficult. We're going to go around. I'm going to start with you, Mr. Wanda. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to give you a statement. I want you to repeat it and you complete it. When I look in these eyes. When I look in these eyes. What I see that I feel good about. What I see that I feel good about. Is. Is completing things. Mm-hmm. Miss Josie. What I see. What I see. That I don't feel good about. What I see in these eyes and I don't feel good about is my outlook on men. Miss hmm. Kim, when I look in these eyes. When I look in these eyes. What I would like to see more of. What I'd like to see more of. Is. Less control. In your eyes. Tell me what it looks like. Hard. Hmm. So then when I look in these eyes, what I'd like to see is more softness. How about that? When I look in these eyes, what I would like to see is more softness. Yeah. Miss Maureen, when I look in these eyes. When I look in these eyes. What I see that I like. What I see that I like. Is. Oh. Just look. Just look and let it rise to the surface. It'll come up. Maureen has never really taken the time to grieve the loss of her children. Now facing the devastation of losing her home to fire, all of her losses are coming to the surface and looking in the mirror is just too difficult. It'll take more time for Maureen to be in touch with and express these feelings. Well, you can work on it. I can work on it. Okay. Miss Summer? When I look in these eyes. When I look in these eyes. What I see that I don't like is. <clears throat> what I see that I don't like is. Confidence. You don't like your confidence level. Nope. Perhaps when she looks in the mirror, she still sees the summer that is overweight, afraid, and weighed down by issues. Maybe today, with today's exercise, she'll be able to accept that she has released the weight and in doing so, release the issues that the weight was holding down. Okay, well, look in there and look for the confidence. It's, that's not there, that's what... Okay, well, what do you see it's that's there that we can use for confidence until we grow confidence? Is there anything there? I just can't look at myself. It's like I can't even get the words to come out if I'm actually looking in my eyes. I don't know what it is. I look at myself, but I see everything that's wrong. Breathe, Summer. You can do this. Look at her and ask her, Summer. She needs you right now. I just can't. It's a choice. Make the choice to do it. It's not a choice. It's not something I can do. Well, you can just sit here and look at it then. You don't want to take any action. You don't want to change your destiny. Damn you. She doesn't like what she sees. Well, okay, ask her what it is about what she sees that she doesn't like. Just ask her, it's she'll tell you. all of it. Is there anything there that you see that you like? Would you like to take your interest out of that? Yes. Okay. Let her know that. When I look in these eyes. When I look in these eyes. What I hope for her future is. What I hope for her future is. I'm trying to do things that are going to make me be able to look at myself. And that's what I can't do. It's, seriously, it feels like I'm incapable of it. Let her know she's okay. You won't. You can't. That's not something I can do. It's not if 
I said it, I'd be lying, and it's not true. Do you feel like you can choose to just have a hope for the future, Summer? My hope is that one day I can look in the freaking mirror and be fine, okay? Okay. Well, that's fine. We'll take that. I'll take that, Summer. And I think every woman in this room can join you in that. Is that accurate? Yes. Yeah. It's hard to watch Summer be so resistant to looking in the mirror. I don't think Summer can see herself at all. I really feel like she doesn't really know who she is right now. People don't usually look in mirrors to thank themselves or say that they're okay. They look in the mirrors to point out the things they don't like and to say, well, you're a dumbass and you're stupid and what the hell were you thinking? Say, forgive me. Forgive me. For all the times. For all the times. I've called you stupid. That I've called you stupid, fat, dumb. Yeah. Ignorant. Tell her. Um, worthless. Yeah. Ladies, we set the standards for how people treat us by the way we treat ourselves. Take care of her. So ladies, have a great day. Talk to yourself. Just don't tell anybody I told you to do it. <laughs> <laughs> about the things that you acquired and the value of the things you acquired so I can better understand what you lost. Maureen's been devastated by the fire that destroyed her home and I want to talk to her today about some of the items she lost because I believe some of those items are the physical ties to her two children who passed away. To Erte's, Erte statue, mm -hmm. Leonardo Newman painting, uh -huh. I had two vases that were about that tall. They were worth probably about $3,600 each. Tiffany basket, a Nerman sculpting. I had five Brocks and one Dorothy Lathrop hanging. You inherited the crystal vases? 2000 for the two. That was probably about $5,000 at the time. Wow. Okay. What I want to do is go through each of these items, and I want you to describe what it felt to own them and what it meant to you. There was a reason why you collected things and there are feelings when you lost it. Maureen has never properly grieved her dead children, and she needs to make the connection that her physical possessions, in some ways, have substituted for them, and why this loss is so hard to grieve. <laughs> Maureen, how hard is it for you to feel? Feel what? Feel anything. Feel pain. Feel loss. Feel regret. regret. Feel that. <laughs> how hard is it for you to actually admit, really, deep down, how you feel? I want this. <laughs> What's up? All right, let's go back. How are you doing today? Good, how are you? I'm good. So you're getting good at this. Stuff. And you look more energized. Mm -hmm. Do you think you have more energy than you did? I always have energy when I come up here. So I'm like, You're Yay! coming to see me. That's right. <laughs> I get to go see Marcus. I am always excited to go see Marcus. I don't care what we do. I know we're going to work out. I know I'm going to be tired. I know I'm going to be sore. And I'm always excited because I just love to see Marcus. You decided that I like you too much, so you have to make me hate you. No. <laughs> Not at all. I want you to love me. Come on. Come on, don't stop on me. Keep it going. No, you're crazy. No, you can do this. No. All right, take a breather. I am literally dizzy. That's it. Summer is feeling lightheaded today during her workout. She pushes it here, but I don't think she's pushing the envelope at home. So uh, we're going to have to step up the program and expect that it's going to get tougher from here. Now we're going to take a look at your food journal and see what's been going on there. Seeing some stuff that's not so great. She says she can't eat a lot of, like, chips and stuff like that, but I still see them on there. So the highlights are really just to let her see exactly what's going on and what I don't think is acceptable. We know that your stomach's a muscle. Eventually, it's going to get bigger, and you're going to have to make the right food choices at that point, because mm -hmm. if you're still making the ones you were making before, what's to say you don't fall right back into right. that position? I think you can do better, you know? And I expect you to do better now, because you know what's expected. From this date on, I'm going to be watching to make sure that you're not making the same food choices. So how you 
doing? Good. Feel okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Tawanda, Tawanda, how does your garden grow? <laughs> Crazy. Okay. Let me hear. Okay. As a child, I would plant some things with mommy and my siblings, like squash and watermelon, but I never looked at growing something natural in the ground to something that I can identify with in my life. The first two chapters of Tawando's autobiography were about her really figuring out where she came from and how it affects her identity today. This next chapter, How Does Your Garden Grow?, is to support her in identifying where she is and where she wants to be. My father is a big issue for me in marrying another woman other than my mother. Getting over the hurt and pain of a divorce between mommy and daddy is something that I have to get over to heal. I know that I must throw out the stones and the pebbles to allow my flower within to shine. I have asked myself on many occasions, what is it that I'm really angry about? My father was a good father. What is holding me back from forgiveness? I am so willing to find out the truth. My beautiful garden is ready for springtime. Why is this forgiveness thing so hard? Um, I think it's the pain. Judgments. As long as we're saying it was right, wrong, good, bad, should, shouldn't, you're blocked. Tawanda seems to be moving ahead nicely with all of the issues we've discussed so far. But now it's time that we go someplace that she's never been with me before. What did we talk about just now? Why did we talk about what we just talked about? We talked about the possibility that maybe these were all substitutions for my children and for my losses. See how smart you are? Oh. I would like you to tell me the three things that you're the most upset about or sad about. I'm sad that there may be a possibility that the two pieces of Kleenex that I used when Lenny died and I wiped her nose, and I wiped Joe's nose when he died, and I hope those things aren't lost. Maureen's tears are good to see. It's the beginning of a long grieving process that is way overdue. And so you have two pieces of Kleenex? And were they uh, on their deathbeds when you did? Oh, they were, they were dead. They were dead. The, the nurse came in and said, you go say goodbye. Tell me why they're important. Because I love them so much. <laughs> I couldn't keep them from dying. Okay. And I'm afraid they might be lost, and that's what's important. I think it's time that Tawanda confront the next really big chapter in her autobiography. I think it would be called Fertility. I want you to tell me what you can about your interuterine procedure. The IUI, that's when they actually take his sperm, Andre's sperm, and put it directly in my uterus. Why do you have to do that? Because we've been uh, trying for so long to um, have a baby. So who has the problem, him or you? Neither one of us. We went to a fertility specialist, and they ran tests with him, and they ran tests with me. I'm fine. He's fine. But yet you haven't conceived, mm -hmm. and the procedure didn't work. Mm -mm. Do you know why you can't conceive, Tawanda? Because I have too much stuff inside of me to clean up. Oh, I, I know this now. Blocked. Mm -hmm. Your creativity mm -hmm. has been blocked. Mm -hmm. Because there's absolutely no reason that you can't conceive a child. I am really believing that the reason why my husband and I hadn't been able to conceive has so much to do with all of the emotional blockage I have within. This pattern that you've been mm -hmm. in has been in place for so long, mm -hmm. it's gonna fight us. And, and I see this seed, mm -hmm. and that is setting ourselves up so that we cannot have what we want. It's that seed of doubt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't have my father because of my stepmother. Mm -hmm. I can't have a baby because who knows what. Mm -hmm. You understand? 
So let's clean it up. Okay. I just want you to repeat this with me. Okay. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. For all the things. For all the things. I doubted I could have. I doubted I could have. Take a breath. I forgive myself. I forgive myself. For the judgments I've held. For the judgments I've held. Against my father. Against my father. I'm giving to Wanda an assignment of creating a new image of herself. You know, they say, if you can see it, you can be it. Mm -hmm. Find a natural position to stand in, and let me see the, how I'm gonna do this now, okay? I'm outlining the silhouette of Tawanda's body, which is really going to be the flower bed of her new garden to match the one she wrote about in her chapter. I heard you say that you had been looking at the bad stuff, mm -hmm. and now you're looking at the good stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want you to put it in this image of Tawanda. Write it in? All, no, you're gonna paint it in. Oh, okay. Oh, you in it. You in it, so bye. I'll come back and check on you at some point. Hi, Summer. Hi. How are you? I'm good. Good. Well, I just brought a little something for you today. Ah. This 125 pounds of fat represents Summer's issues with her weight problem. Yes, she has admitted that she has emotional reasons for gaining weight, but she hasn't invested in dealing with them. She's been complacent in her home workouts and basically been going through the motions in her assignments. This is a critical time for Summer. She either has to decide to commit 100% or leave the starting over house. What do you think? 125 pounds is a human. I think it's a lot. So when you look at it, what else do you think? That it's gross. I gotta go to the shower. That's disgusting. It looks like intestines or something. No, oh. it's, it's chicken fat. Chicken fat, yo. Oh. So I believe that for every pound of excess weight we have, there's a feeling that you're trying to avoid. Okay. So start shoveling and start telling me feelings that you've been avoiding. The doctor told me, like at six, that I needed to lose 20 pounds. How did it feel to have the doctor say that you're 20 pounds overweight? Obviously, it felt like and basically it was ignored. Your parents didn't help you then take care of your health? Uh-uh. And how does that feel? I think they were trying not to make a big deal out of it, thinking it would fix itself. So it, I guess it feels invisible in a way because they wanted it to just go in and thump. Okay, how does that feel? I would have to say lonely. Lonely. What else? You feel rejected. Mm. How does it feel when you're rejected? Like you're not good enough. You're not good enough. What else? And um, you feel stupid. Like you can't win. So gain weight. Don't want to feel, got to gain weight. Right. Got to be invisible, gain weight. It's tough. I feel like I'm really choosing between my family and my past and myself and my future in this exercise. And I am not sure if I have it in me to finish. It's 125 pounds of loneliness, frustrations, judgment, betrayal. What are you gonna do with it? I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. Okay, well, you can just sit here and look at it then. You don't wanna take any action. You don't wanna change your destiny. Marine lost in the fire were not insured. So today, I want her to meet with an insurance expert so together they can figure out a way to help rebuild her life. So you had had a fire. Yes. I'm sorry to hear about your fire. Nobody was hurt, right? Nobody was hurt. Okay. No injuries well, that's, at all. That's the best thing. Yeah. That's the best thing. Okay. So the fire was an unknown origin. Okay. Started yeah. on the porch. Started on the porch. Okay. I believe the apartment's below me. I think that goes under my liability. It would be covered under your liability, but it shouldn't need to be covered under your liability unless you caused the fire. We've got an inventory. You have an idea as the stuff that's replaceable. 
Let's talk a little bit about the stuff that's not replaceable. Write things down because as you go through, you're going to remember stuff and you want to make sure that you have some kind of a documentation for you to look back at and have the memory. And so it's a trigger. Write notes, write letters to yourself. And this is for, you know, like memories and, and as you go through, okay? Yeah. Um, because that's, that's what makes me cry. I'll never get my son or my daughter's graduation pictures again. Through, through family, through friends, through acquaintances that you've had over the years, some of those people might have those pictures. Some of those people might not have the same exact picture that was on your wall, but they might have a picture. They may have a picture, a graduation picture. They may have a, just something. My wife and I have a memory box. This is stuff that we want to remember. It was cards from the kids, it was legal documents, health documents. This is the only thing that we took out when, when we had the earthquake. We took this memory box out of our house. Get one of these, you can go to the store, you can get one of these and just start filling it up. And fill it up with your notes. Fill it up with the replacement pictures that you get from family. It's difficult. It's very difficult, but it's something that we all need to do. Yeah, and this helps you rebuild. Mm -hmm. it, it also helps you get over it. Stuart, he's given me a lot of hindsight, but he said I do have my rights to get as much of the full value as possible for all of the things that I've lost. You'll get through it. Writing those memories down, you'll, you'll never lose them. exercise is to fill in the figure about my garden and what my garden looks like visually. I'm excited about uh, the new things that I'm being faced with. This is a different Tawan. confronting all these issues that got me into the position I'm in. There will never be a new me. I'll never really be able to heal all of those wounds. You can ask for help, you know, sometimes you can't do it alone. One, two, three. Got it. Good job. We're almost there. All right. Now, I want you to really think about it because I'm not going to have you do this and then go back to your old ways. You've got to be willing to say yes, Summer, or I'm not doing this with you. Are you really ready? Well, I don't feel like I have a choice. I have to. Because what's going to happen if you don't? I'm just wasting time. So you ready? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's disgusting. That's right. That's what fat is. Didn't you say that was disgusting? Yes. I'm really glad to see that Summer has made the choice to take action. Removing the fat is a symbolic gesture of her newfound commitment to throw away her physical and emotional weight. One, two. Ah! So I'm talking to Dr. Stan, I'm talking to Yanla. If they ask you to do anything, you have to say yes. Otherwise, you're breaking your agreement. All right. Take your empty wheelbarrow and go home. <laughs> I'll give it. I know. Good job. I want to see the picture. Okay, you want me to bring it over here? Okay. 
This is my masterpiece. All righty. Okay, tell me what you have. Okay, I have a flower in my heart. That's where my garden is starting to grow. And these things are seeds. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? And these circles represent members of my family. So this is all of us, my mother, my father, my sisters, and my brother. And this is my father's wife. Now, it's not part of this, because this is the immediate part of the family. Okay. However, the yellow is new life and forgiveness. Oh, good. Okay. Yes. All okay. right. And these are three rings. Okay. So there's three kids, two girls and a boy. And this is me performing. These are lights. All right. And these are my notes. And this is me going, um, being in a diamond club. That means I sold 10 million copies. Whoa. So that's it. That is really incredible. Isn't that beautiful? I love, I'm so proud I of love it. that you have faith everywhere. And I'm so glad you gave your stepmom yellow. That's a big one to mm -hmm. Wanda. It's a huge one. So what, what does this teach you now about yourself? that I can open up myself up for a lot of different things. I just see and hear you very differently now. Do you? Yeah. The resonance of your voice, the energy of your being for me now is just very different than it was. Mm -hmm. And I remember your song, Here I Am. Mm -hmm. I don't feel that song for you anymore. Do really? I? I think your song is different. That song's started, I've got anger deep inside of me. What would her song be? Pink. <laughs> the mm. Black pink. I mean, really. Don't, you don't have to answer me now. Just okay. think about it. I just think that you're going to find a whole new aspect of your voice. Mm. I just sense it. I see it. Very good. Doing good work. Thank good, you. Good, good work. I know you guys are going out to a lovely girls' night on the town. Don't bite anybody. <laughs> Y'all have a good night. Give me a hug. Thank you. Okay, sweetie pie. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Have a good evening. Okay. Cam, whenever we want. Is everybody in the car? It's Wanda! We can leave whenever we like. Okay, I'm starving. Let's go. Did you get the directions? Hey, Josie! Josie has decided not to go to the restaurant tonight because she doesn't want to spend money for the babysitter or for going out to dinner. So it's too bad she's not coming. There it is, right, it's right there. Where? Right, on, right there on oh, the right. Oh, good call, Kimmy. I love Italian guys. Oh, yeah. oh. I don't do Italians. But they are the nuts. good lovers. Yeah. Right? Italians? Yeah. They're OK. So far, I already liked what I saw as far as who worked here. How old is he? I don't care. I like Let me Italians. See. I think starting my day having to shovel 125 pounds of fat, it's just not setting me up for a good evening at all. So I'm consciously making a decision to let all of that negative stuff go and just have fun. No, no I was able to complete my workout. Caesar salad. Here, you can have Thank you. Are you Frankie Jr.? <laughs> you, are you Frankie? No. Dino. <laughs> what, what part of Little Italy? Already, I have felt changes in people's personalities with me, and I am not used to getting attention from guys. I was too busy staring at his eyes. <laughs> his I'll eyelashes. No, Seriously. Dino, you know, yeah, his, his eyelashes are like... All the guys in Chicago are like Oh, my God. Like, hello, hello. I think you were flirting with Dino. <laughs> Look, this she did this. Look, look, look. I saw that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't coming out. <laughs> You're just jealous. But that's cute, though, because I've never seen you flirt before, ever. So that's good. Good job. Cheers. 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 Ready? Go. Oh, this looks so good. Thanks. No, I'll, I'll work on it. You want to take the big plane? It was good. It's really good. These are delicious. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did he really? Yeah. Summer, you
you wanted to get laid. He's hot. Mm hmm I like that guy. Can you hide that? No. No, we're going to give we're it to him. We're giving it to Dino. Oh, my God. Dino, I don't know his last name. Frankie. Dino no, Frankie. Frankie. <laughs> Spumoni. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Who we'll fuck you up? He's at the bar. You know you what? Hot yes. Tawanda and I are plotting to give the waiter Summer's number, and we really hope that they'll make a love connection. What are you gonna say? Oh my! Oh my God. This is from the cat girl. <laughs> 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 you do that, and I'll, yeah. I'll say, this is the one the cat. Come here, Dino. <laughs> this is from the cat girl. Meow. <laughs> We can get any man. Yeah. Any man. Pretty much. Pretty much. Dang! You have to give me five. That was really good. <laughs> I think it's really exciting for Summer to have someone flirt with her. This is exactly what the doctor ordered, and I really hope that it works out. All right, ladies. Oh, Ooh, Lord. Ooh, you, you better take that. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Cat, good boys do bad things. <laughs> really exciting for Dino to be leaving me a number and a message on the back of our bill, but I am actually really nervous now because I'm thinking, whoa, I might have maybe bitten off more than I can chew here. Oh, my <laughs> God. Today's my first day that I've, you know, like, really sat down and met with Rhonda. Yeah. It's like, you know, she, we made out a list of things that I remembered were gone. So I have to uh, continue the list of lost items and my feelings uh -huh. about them. And when I was writing out my list, I thought of the red Corvette. The red Corvette? Yeah, that was in the cabinet. Yeah. And I thought of Linda Stevie Ray Vaughan CD. Yeah. <sighs> Well, really... I found some pictures today at the living room. Of the living Do you have pictures of the cabinets? Well, I don't know if there are pictures of the cabinets, but... Wow. That would be great. Yeah, I was really happy to find that. The picture of the dining room set, and, uh, you know, just... Great. Okay. So I love you, and thank you for all that you're doing. Okay. I love you, too. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Is this the first time that you had a hookup like this? Yes. Well, first you have to show me how to have a um, competition. Okay. Ring, ring! <laughs> Hi. Then... May I speak with Summer, please? Hello? Hi, is this Summer? <gasps> yes. Hi, Summer. This is Dino. How are you? <laughs> so? I'm actually really good. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Doing great. So, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Be yourself. But don't tell too many jokes. <laughs> so, talk to them, but don't over-talk to them. Because you want him to want to talk to you more. Mm -hmm. And another thing, don't give, him, don't give him any compliments off the back. 
Okay. Like, man, you're handsome. You know, I really thought you were attractive. You don't ever want a man to think that you don't have a life, period. Okay. Because the first thing that comes to their mind is desperate, desperate, desperate. Even if you are, you don't want to admit it. I think everything that I've been dealing with today and then basically flirting with Dino is really, really making me aware of how much I am shifting and how much I am changing as a person. And that, as a woman, I'm really starting a whole new chapter. Oh, you're gonna be just fine, Summer. You have so much potential. Next on Starting Over, Josie makes a stunning discovery. That just blows my mind. I'm in shock right now. It's hard for me to hear that. It disturbs you too, doesn't yeah, it? it's very disturbing. I don't know how to really deal with it. Jennifer receives surprising news. I didn't want to believe what she was saying. I think that she's just wasting her time. And Summer struggles to let off some steam. I start to shake. I start to cry. It, it really scares me. 